Sitting down with us from 3,000 miles away, Mr. Uh, Ed Worley, NRA ILA's California State Liaison. Ed, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. Congratulations. Oh, well, it was a big team effort on everybody's part. You know, it, it, it all worked together because everybody worked together as a team. That's what's important. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so last night when we were talking to you about uh, 22 hours ago, uh, yeah. you, uh, we, we still had three bills that were on the floor of the Senate, a couple of yep. hours to go before the end of the legislative session. We knew that the, uh, the push was coming fast and furious. What happened after we finished talking, Ed? Because uh, as I understand it, one of these bills actually uh, did see some movement. Yeah, well, we were able to stop 2358. That's that bill that Assemblyman De Leon was trying to fix the handgun registration bill that he messed up last year. This is how he was going to try to fix it, and that was a very bad bill. So that we stopped cold on the Senate floor. They, we came within one vote, and we stopped it, and they voted on it. I, I lost track, I think, five times on the Senate floor. Wow. And we stopped that one. Uh, the long gun registration bill, AB 1810, that bill, that's one of the bills we stopped seven times the night before, the day before, when they voted on it seven times on the Senate floor. That one, apparently they gave up on that one uh, late in the day because they pulled it to the inactive file, which means they didn't intend to do any more action on it. Yeah. But I warned you last night, nothing is sacred and nothing is over until they bang the gavel. And thank God this year that we're halfway we're at the end of the session. Toward midnight, everything turned into a pumpkin under the state constitution. They had to get everything done by midnight last night. Right. So, it, so 1810, they pushed that to the um, to the enacted file on the Senate floor, which means that's a, that's an out-and-out out victory right there. Then we had AB 1934, the the uh, ban on open carry, that squeaked out of the Senate very very late in the night to uh, back to the Assembly by one vote. So then we switched over to the Assembly side. And we're fighting it there. What was going on is that the, the Democrat Party yesterday, they did a whole bunch of stuff on the budget yesterday and ate up a whole bunch of time all during the day doing budget bills because it was the last day of session. Mm -hmm. So the Republicans started playing slow ball, and they started taking more and more time to do bills, more and more time to do bills, more and more debates, more and more debates. And apparently um, it looks like some people lost track of time. Because what happened is, is by the time maybe 1934 got over back to the assembly side, it was about, geez, it was about 11, 15, 11, 20 when they transmitted it back to the assembly side. So they still had a whole bunch of bills to do on the assembly side, a whole bunch of bills. And AB 1934, they brought it up and all of our Republican supporters threw the microphones up and started debating it, made some parliamentary moves to put it back to committee, which failed, of course. But then the, I think the Democrats realized that they were running out of time and quickly running out of time, because by the time all that happened, it was about then it was about eleven thirty-five or so. So then they realized, oh my gosh, we got all these other bills sitting here on the assembly floor. We got to get through these. Right. And it, it takes so much time. You know, it takes X amount of time just to do a bill. You got to put, you got to read it, you got to do the debate and everything else. So then they started realizing, oh my God, we're running out of time to do a whole bunch of bills. So. So they ditched the uh, the the uh, the open carry ban. Yeah, they put it back on the file to to stop it from being debated. And then what happened was, is they tried to then they started trying to run bills as fast as they could on the assembly side to beat the clock. And the same thing on the senate side. So all, all of a sudden, everybody looked at their watch and said, "Oh my God, there's only 30 minutes left." So they started trying to push bills out the door as quick as they could. And uh, what happened was, is that. Uh, AB 1934 got caught up in the last-minute crush, and it, they, did, they were not able to vote on it, a final vote on it. So we won because the California State Constitution saved us because of the time limit. Wow. And, you know, so I don't care how we win as long as we win. <laughs> well, so, you know, yeah. the good news is, is our, our NRA members did a fantastic job this year in writing and calling and faxing and emailing and yeah, they were even calling last night. I was getting complaints from senators and some women last night. They were still getting calls at 9, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, emails and faxes. Oh, those poor babies. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, so it was, it was a very good night. And then also, we, you and I had talked about another bill, Senate Bill 250. And that was a bill that was a, sort of a strange bill. It was about spay or neutering dogs. And oh, we opposed yeah. it because of the hunting dog bill. 
Yes. Because, you know, all of us had, you know, we had labs in our family, and we had generations of labs in our family. And, you know, a lot of my guys, a lot of guys I know, they have generations of hunting dogs in the family. Mm -hmm. And this bill would have required you to spay and neuter your dog after, after six months, after it was six months old. You had to get a permit to keep your dog intact and all this other garbage to do. So that, we worked very closely with the hunting organizations and the dog organizations on that one. And that one failed last night also. Oh, good. Yeah, and if you remember, a month and a half or so ago, a month ago, lose track of time, remember we stopped the lead ban, AB 2223, instead of natural resources. Yes. So if you look at this year, we ran our 11-bill package with our state association, CRPA, which, by the way, we worked very closely with on, on all of these bills. They were with us all the time. Their lobbyist was with us all the time and working, working. It's a very good team. So if you look at that, we stopped 2223, the extent of the lead ban. We stopped the Fish and Game Commission from extending the lead ban administratively. We stopped uh, SB 250. We stopped AB 1810. We stopped uh, losing track AB 1934. And we stopped AB 2358. So this year was a very good year, and I really appreciate the hard work of all of our members and the guys in the gun clubs. And it was a very good team effort, and everybody deserves credit for the win. Well, Ed, absolutely, but, uh, you know, I, I think on behalf of California gun owners, uh, I want to thank you as well. A lot of long hours there in uh, Sacramento, and, and again, it, as you say, it's a team effort, but uh, uh, you, you played a, a role as well, sir, that uh, cannot be under, uh, underestimated, and, uh, and again, we, we appreciate all your hard work. Oh, it, well, I, it, I'm honored. I mean, I, I'm in this for the cause. That's what I've been doing since I got stuck into this because they tried to ban my guns in 1989. The thing I would ask them to do now is, with this big victory in our belts, what everybody needs to do is go and call all the state senators, all the Republicans, and our five Democrat friends and thank them for voting to protect our rights. Call and email and write them now that you've done that. Now call and thank them. Be very appreciative. Call and thank them for all their hard work. The five Democrats are Assembly Mem uh, Senator Lou Curia, Senator Denise Cheney, Senator Negroni McLeod, Senator Rod Wright, Denise Cheney. Um, let's try here. <laughs> Curia, Cheney. It's been a long night. I understand. Uh, Negroni McLeod, Cheney, Rod Wright, Lou Curia. Yeah. I tell you yeah, what, Ed, brain. when you think of the other two, you let me know, and I'll, I'll pass the names along. Yeah, we'll put, we put it on our alert. So it was Rod Wright, Denise DeCheney, uh, Senator McGrady McLeod, Senator, Senator Lou Curry, and Senator Rod Wright. All right, there you go. So, so those are the ones that we need to call those modern Democrats, call them and thank them for their votes, because they were under an immense amount of pressure from the Democrat leadership to vote with the, with the party. And they, they walked away from the party, and they voted to protect our rights. So all of us, no matter what our party affiliation is, we need to call those five modern Democrats and thank them for their votes and thank them for standing strong. Call and thank our Republican allies for all the, all the hard work they did. And, you know, it's good to call and complain. It's good to call and, and, and be aggressive. But when we win like this, we have to give our friends the appreciation they deserve in the legislature and call and thank them. Absolutely. So, Ed, one more uh, quick question here before we uh, uh, let you go. I believe that you're actually going into hibernation here for a few days. <laughs> you, you've earned it, like 48 hours of sleep. Uh, given how close some of these bills came to uh, getting to the governor's desk, including uh, AB 1934, the uh, proposed ban on open carry, do right. you anticipate that, uh, that, that these bills are going to be brought back again next session? Well, I don't know. I mean, they may fact that the long gun bill was pulled off the Senate floor and they quit trying to push it. Remember, in the long gun registration bill, we had 15 sheriffs opposing the bill, mm -hmm. including the State Sheriff's Association. So the question is, is think of how much political capital and how much time they expended in trying to push the bills forward. I saw the, the volunteer slash lobbyist for a handgun control and a Brady campaign there walking around, and they were not happy campers. Because they saw what was coming down the line. They saw that we were holding the line and, and they weren't going to fly. Yeah. So the question is, is that when you go to the parties like this and you expend all this political capital and you don't and, and you put these elected officials in the box. And believe me, 
the number of phone calls, emails, and faxes that the legislature got in California really made a huge impact. So when you have – the thing we always have is we have our members, and that's what the other side doesn't have. So all this work that went in this year is going to affect next year because – I don't think they may come back with some of the bills. Now they may try to come back with some of the bills, mm-hmm. but I all just need to realize that I, you know, I keep hearing when I go talk to people in different places that, you know, NRA doesn't put enough resources in California. We don't do this. We don't do that. You know, we can never win in California. Remember, we got the right. We got the um, Katrina bill, the Emergency Powers bill, passed a couple of years ago, and everybody said we couldn't do it. This year we stopped them cold on all these bills. So what everybody needs to do is now is take a breath here, relax, take, spend some family time in the next couple of days. But now we have to all start gearing up for the election coming up in November. And all these Democrats and all these Republicans who helped us, now it's time to go out and work the campaigns, walk the precincts, and do everything you can to help the people who've supported us. Keep, you know, keep going to calendary.com. See what's going on at the local level. Look at the lawsuits we and the NRA are doing in the state of California. Because mm-hmm. we're suing all the cities we can. So we have a very aggressive... Uh, plan in California. Remember, the same bill package that NRA and our state affiliate CRP, California Rifle and Pistol Association, we introduced this year. We're going to reintroduce the same bill package next year: of reciprocity, right to carry, right to hunt. All these other bills that we that we that we weren't able to get through, we're going to be pushing those bills again next year. So it's not just plain defense. Yeah. We're going to be pushing bills in the opposite direction. All so right. that is what we all need to think about. And no matter what happens, this has been a very good year for all of us. Our members did a great job, and it's a great team effort, and they may come back again next year, but having the bills defeated like this doesn't bode well for you next year when they, when you, when they pop up and the Democrats go, you're making us vote on this stuff again? Right. Because yeah. after seven votes, a lot of the Democrats were very upset that they were being made to vote on the bills over and over again. They're like, let's kill these things and move on with our lives. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, let's hope that uh, these bills are indeed dead. Ed Worley... Thank you again, sir, for uh, coming on the program this evening. Get some sleep, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you, guys, for all your support. We'll talk to you later. Ed Worley, NRA ILA's California State Liaison with us here on the uh, program.